one of our viewers, Rachel Ferguson, has written in and asks about um, Thomas Sowell was defending the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And there's a lot of, I've heard a lot of defenses of that bombing uh, on the grounds of it ended the war quick, quickly, more people would have died if we hadn't done it. And she was surprised to hear Thomas Sowell make this defense because he's, you know, quasi-libertarian. And she wanted to know your thoughts on that bombing and Thomas Sowell's uh, defense of it. Yeah, like I, I, I knew that Thomas Sowell and, um, and, and others like him are what I would call classic, uh, classical liberals. And they, they, they're far more conservative, traditional Republicans on foreign policy. It does, so it doesn't surprise me if Thomas Sowell made that argument. My instincts are the opposite of that. And, and when you dig just a little bit into the decision to bomb Hiroshima, in Nagasaki, you, you discover that um, then General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who we all know is the guy that warned us against the military industrial complex, yeah. argued at the time that um, Japan was already beaten and it was completely unnecessary and a horrific idea. And I, I, think, I think that historical context only strengthens my instinct to say that, um, you know, slaughtering um, tens of thousands of of, of innocence is not how the United States at least should conduct war. And I, I feel like that's, that's part of the, the ethos that we at least pretend to, to advance that, that when we're talking about, about war. Now, peop, uh, libertarians are gonna quickly point out that, that um, you know, every president since then has been guilty of, of, of killing innocent people in the name of, of defending America. Yeah. But but the the thing that that struck me when you when you dig into the Manhattan Project, which was this vast government um, government works program, um, that it reminds me a little bit of whatever we're calling this this. Um, it's not the pandemic industrial complex because that that is all of this infrastructure that rose up from the emergence of the virus. But as we get into the to, to, to Fauci's double dealings, we're discovering that there is something that goes back to to 9/11, where the U.S. government has has built this vast clandestine program yeah. to create gain of function viruses and then come up with a solution to those gain of function viruses, all in the name of keeping us safe. Should somebody else create a super virus through gain of function research? And and what's what's ironic about it is um, one. It leaked out and and killed a lot of people. And two, we were doing this in China, presumably one of of, of the countries that we're, protect, we're supposedly protecting ourselves from because there was a Obama administration ban on gain of function. So they went they went around it. But it, it, it reminds me of the Manhattan Project in a lot of ways because we ended up creating this this thing that could be the end of all of us. Should should we slip? Should something bad happen? And I, I think I think as libertarians we should be wildly skeptical that we could ever trust government with that much power. 